Hello, Cassie and Daniel here to give you a taste of our contribution to the handbook of placemaking. What you get in this book are excerpts from two longer interviews held five years apart. We call our chapter Displacemaking. Five years ago, Columbia University's Avery Review invited us to reflect on Chicago, the city that inspired our earliest work. So me as an anthropologist and Daniel as an artist. We organized our first interview around something that had long fascinated us both, and that is the prevalence of placemaking talk within contemporary urban development in the United States. We wanted to compare notes from other cities where we had since worked, including New York, Detroit, and, and Philadelphia. And we especially wanted to think about how placemaking in practice replicates some difficult dynamics. Where we work, this would be its tendency to valorize, even aestheticize different groups associated with marginalized urban places. Now, valorize sounds positive, but it often occurs without substantial commitments to conditions and resources that would keep these groups in place while the surrounds change around them. We didn't want to dismiss placemaking projects can do on the ground. So we dug into the role of the creative placemaker in small scale projects aimed at reviving places, but also repairing relationships to them. Creative placemaking initiatives show up quite a bit in urban institutions with historically complicated relationships to their surrounding communities. A good example of this would be universities. Creative placemaking initiatives can and do feed universities' development agendas, but they also bring with them resources that can facilitate small scale, but still meaningful reparations to neighboring communities. Kara Courage invited us to revisit these ideas in 2020. And through another series of conversations, we observed how much creative placemaking has become professionalized as a discourse, but also as a practice. So it feels like there's a standard laundry list that comes with the urban placemaking consultant. So things like murals, oral histories, pop-up stages, parklets, all this kind of stuff. Some of these techniques are quite familiar in our own fields and we wanted to think about the risk of transposing them to development contexts. But we also put standardized placemaking speak in tension with emerging talk and action about placekeeping. What makes placekeeping so exciting is how the groups that subscribe to it foreground equity. It's not just talk. They also have an expansive approach that exceeds safe cultural programming. So they can pivot quickly into activities like protest or direct service provision. And there's been a real need for this during the pandemic. And so it's been clarifying to observe groups that are funded under the rubric of placemaking move towards meeting the needs of the frontline communities in which they work. So there's so much more to say about this and we'd love you to have a look at our contribution. And if you wanna talk more, we are always open to throwing around ideas, send us an email. Thanks a lot. Thank you.